Mathematics is truly incredible. Everything in our universe is tied to it, from the explosion that created us all to how many apples are left when one is taken away. Somewhere in the middle of these calculations is the physics of extreme sports, specifically snowboarding. One of the most mathematically interesting aspects of snowboarding is carving. Carving is the process of redistributing the direction and velocity of the snowboard in an effort to reduce velocity by increasing resistance upon the snowboard. There are two ways a carve may be executed, one with the board flat on the snow, and one with the board's inner edge tilted into the snow. A perfect carve is performed by keeping the board pointing in the direction of its velocity. When the snowboard overturns, the snowboard begins to point in a direction other than its velocity, and begins skidding. This effectively turns it into a snowplow, and its velocity is reduced greatly. A perfect carve allows the snowboard to minimize resistance against the board, allowing them to navigate much more quickly. The degree to which a snowboarder must turn to execute a perfect carve depends on the radius of the side cut of the snowboard. So, for a pure carve to occur while the board is flat on the snow, radius of the side cut must equal the radius of the turn. For the purposes of this video, radius will be represented by A. To carve without tilting the snowboard is potentially dangerous because the snow exists in three dimensions, not two. This allows the snowboarder to potentially snag the edge of the snowboard while executing the carve. By snagging the edge, this greatly reduces the velocity of the snowboard, while the snowboarder's center of gravity is still traveling at the previous velocity. Because the lower half of the snowboard is slower and the top faster, the snowboard begins to rotate in the direction of the velocity. Before explaining the second form of carving, a tilted carve, we must come to understand camber. Camber is the property of the snowboard to arc upwards in the middle. So, if the two ends of the snowboard touch the ground, the middle would not. This property is used to control how the snowboarder's weight is displaced across the snow beneath him or her. Without camber, the weight would be pressed into the center of the snowboard, causing it to become stuck in the snow because it would have to displace the snow in front of it in order to move. However, the amount of flex that will occur is variable to the mass of the snowboarder, acceleration of the snowboarder, and the snowboard's direction, and the degree of tilt to which the snowboard is in, because it cannot bend if there is solid ground beneath it. Although snowboards are manufactured with camber, there are times when reverse camber is desirable, such as when performing a turn in which the tilt's degree is not zero. This allows the snowboard to match the radius of the turn by flexing into shape as force is pressed upon it. To carve a tilted turn without reverse camber would not allow the snowboarder to execute perfect carves. The reason for this is that as it is carving through portion A, the top half of the turn, the turn arc is equal to the side cut arc, and while carving through B, the turn arc is equal to the side cut arc multiplied by the cosine of the degree of tilt. These two values differ, which causes the turn to become elliptical in shape. Due to its elliptical shape, a pure carve is impossible, because as a snowboarder reaches the latter half of the turn, it would be impossible to keep the velocity pointing at the turn of the direction and oversteer the curve. So, a snowboard must have a reverse camber such that when axes A and B are projected to the snow, they produce a circle. The right amount of reverse camber must be applied, and due to the flexibility of the snowboard, mass and acceleration, this becomes extremely variable. So, few besides professional snowboarders can perform pure carves regularly. The equation for this carve is the radius of the turn equals the radius of the side cut multiplied by the cosine of theta. This tells us that the greater the theta value, the smaller the arc of the turn becomes. In order to be able to work with the snowboarder in mathematical terms, an equation must be derived. But first, a free body diagram must be built. <clears throat> G is the border's center of gravity. Theta is the angle of lean between the snowboarder and the ground. This value is perpendicular to the snowboard. P is the approximate point of contact with the snow. L is the distance between P and G. AC is the centripetal acceleration of point G. This is acceleration in the x direction towards the center of the turn at any given instant. F1 is the force of the snow on the board in the x direction. N1 is the force of the snow on the snowboard in the y direction. Seeing as the center of the mass is not moving in the y direction at any given instant because it is in equilibrium with the ground, then we can assume that n1 minus mass by gravity by cosine of theta equals zero. This is equation one. We can also infer that because the snowboard is hypothetically not slipping, then f1 minus mass by gravity by sine of theta by cos of theta equals mass by centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is velocity squared divided by the radius of the turn. We can approximate g to be in rotational equilibrium for the sake of mathematics. This may be written as f1 sine of theta by l minus n1 cosine of theta by l equals zero. This is equation three. By combining these three equations, we are able to solve for theta, the angle of lean. These three equations give us g cosine of a over g sine of a by cosine of beta 
added to velocity squared divided by the radius of the turn. It's important to note that the L value and the mass do not need to be known because these two cancel out. As well, the alpha value equals the radius of the side cut, and the beta value equals the radius of the side cut multiplied by the cosine of theta. The previous equation is based off of the factors in this diagram, where alpha is the slope angle, beta is the angle the snowboard makes with the equal potential line along the surface of the slope. The equal potential line is the constant altitude at the given instant and is perpendicular to gravity. AT is the radius of the turn, V is the velocity of the snowboarder along the turn in the x direction of the snowboard, and the y axis is perpendicular to the slope. The x direction is perpendicular to the velocity and in this case is parallel to the snowboard. Seeing as snowboarding is done on snow, and snow has an extremely small friction coefficient, it is quite as easy for the snowboard to slip during a turn. To diagnose whether a snowboard will slip or not, we first need to decide which case we are looking at. There are two cases, one involving a flat horizontal slope and one involving a flat angular slope. To avoid slipping in the first case, the snowboarder's force must be exerted at an angle of 90 degrees to the slope. Otherwise, if the force is exerted in any other direction, it will push the board in that direction. This occurs because when the friction between the snowboard and the snow is so small that almost any force can cause slipping. Slipping pertaining to an angular surface is slightly more mathematically involved. To avoid slipping, the snowboarder's force must be pressed into the snow at a specific angle of tilt, such that the component of the applied force parallel to the plane of the snowboard points into the snow. Theta is the angle of tilt between the snowboard and the snow. FR is the resultant force exerted by the snowboarder's feet on top of the snowboard. Delta is the angle between the applied force and the snow surface. Psi is the angle of the applied force and the snowboard. To avoid slipping, the angle psi must be greater than or equal to 90 degrees. This means that the component of FR parallel to the plane of the snowboard will be either zero or it will point directly into the snow. And the edge of the snow it sits on will prevent it from slipping. However, if the angle of psi is less than 90 degrees, then the component of FR parallel to the plane of the snowboard will point outward and it will slip out of the groove that it sits in. By geometry, these calculations mean that a delta must be greater than or equal to 90 minus delta. With this knowledge, we are now able to check the calculation previously done. Since the system is in rotational equilibrium, N1 and F1 must pass through the center of gravity. So, this means that the delta value is the same as the angle of lean. So, delta equals 68.5 degrees, and 90 minus the theta of the snowboard tilt is 60 degrees. So, this calculation checks out for being accurate. accurate. And so, through a brief overview, it can be proved that one of the most exhilarating, dangerous, and celebrated sports in the world is very much so related to mathematics, something less renowned for being exhilarating and dangerous. So concludes our journey into the further insight of carving, one of the most integral aspects of the entire sport.